Hoping to get your popcorn ready podcast. This is your host, Hatch, with my boy. Yep, yep, the other host. I am in the building. He's in the building. He's in the building. We got, we got Alabama's in the building today, y'all. Yes, sir. Right? Dude. Jonathan Allen from the Washington Redskins from Alabama. I didn't is know in you were from Anniston. Born in Anniston, Alabama on the military base. Yeah. What? Y'all, y'all you know I'm from Alexander City, right? You know. <laughs> we played Anniston all the time. But who won, though? Ben Rugg. We were six eight. We, we were six eight class. We was we was waxing people. Is, that, is he trying the truth? It's probably it? true. You know, I, I didn't grow up there. I was just born there. I moved all over. So right. Like, yeah, I'll give it to him. Okay, okay. Yeah. Y'all was a little powerhouse? Okay. Six eight. Yeah, when we played with six eight, now I think they're down to like four eight. Three okay. Four, all, right. all right. It fell a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But all good. Yeah, too. You know. So welcome out to California. First time in Cali. How you liking it? I think it's cool, man. It's different, man. Different cats, different weather. Yeah. yeah. Different vibes. Yeah. I can get down with it. You went from Alabama to like, of course, you play for Washington, but you're in the Virginia area, so you're all East Coast down south, right? Alabama, lived in Pittsburgh for a little bit, lived okay. in Seattle, Washington, Cincinnati. Dang. Okay. North, South Carolina. Dad was in the military, so I moved all over. All over the place. Yeah. Now, did, what did you take away from like certain cities? Like, okay, I want to be like, I want to be in a lot of different cities, or like, oh, I want to find somewhere now that I'm an adult and just be somewhere specifically at the rest of my Man, career. Man, I moved all over, so I feel like I got my traveling out of the way. There you so go. So for me, I just want to be consistent, yeah. stay in one location, hang out all year. Yeah. You know, something slight. I'm really low key. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I mean, you ain't that low key. You got the little jewelry, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? You're looking song. fly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but again, went to Alabama, first round pick. Of course, played for Saban. Now you're with the Washington Redskins. How does the, again, being ranked one, two, three, your whole career, then you go to Washington, you guys don't have that much success. How are you kind of battling that, you yeah, know, as far as trying to, to. Obviously, a winning program. Yeah. And then, you know, thinking you're going to go in, at least make a difference based on your draft status. And then as a team, as a whole, you're not succeeding as much. Right. And that, that's, that's a big drop off coming from Alabama. Alabama right. and I know I've been on campus, I've been around, and I know what the culture is like there in T-Town. It's tough. It's tough. I feel like the, the thing that I've learned since going to the league is trying to balance winning and guys' own personal things going on. Because I mean, let's be real, mm. we play this game to take care of our family mm-hmm. financially, and do what we got to do. But I don't think that can, that has to come at the cost of winning. Mm. So for me, I've been trying to find that good balance on the team of this guy's in a contract year. He's definitely going to do what he has to do to take care of himself. But mm-hmm. it doesn't have to come at the expense of the team. Mm-hmm. So that's been something, you know, going into my sixth year, I've been trying to learn more and more about every year. Playing with guys like AP, yeah. Vernon Davis, who you play with. Well, yeah. Alex Smith. Just talking to guys like that, picking their brain, trying to figure out where is that fine line. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, it's tough. <laughs> you know, we, right. we, we want to win. I want to win. Yeah, right. yeah. But um, it's a learning process, man. You got to go through that process. Right. So what is it going to take for the Washington now, now commanders, commanders. <laughs> to get back on track? You know, like I said, you're used to winning. So, I mean, I'm sure like, you know, this is what, your sixth year now? Going to six. Going on going your on sixth six, year. Yep. That has to be difficult. You know what I mean? For me, like I said, I know that was the opposite for me. Like, in Chattanooga, we didn't really win that much. So to go to an organization <laughs> where they were winning, it was like, you know, the light bulb mm-hmm. came on for me. I'm like, yo, this is what it feels like. So now you're on the other side of that spectrum. You know, there's something that you learned or you're taking from, you know, your years at Alabama to help get this program back on track. And if so, what, what, what is that? What is that? I feel like it's, it's a winning culture. And I feel like you hear that term in the media and you don't really think about it. But you know, mm-hmm. when you're a part of a winning team, mm-hmm. you think like winners, you practice like winners, you right. eat in the cafeteria like winners, you don't leave trash hanging around. And I know that's a very small example. That's a big example. That's a big that's example. A small, example. Big. Yeah, you know what I mean? How you do anything is how you do everything. Absolutely. You leave, the, leave the locker room like yeah. trash, you leave the cafeteria like trash, you run off the practice field. Mm-hmm. Just, just like the little things Details. that I feel like younger teams and losing teams don't do. Yeah. They don't think about. Yeah. I guarantee, a uh, you know, funny story, I was talking to my strength coach and he was talking about when New England came and practiced with us, I think it was before I got here, mm-hmm. how Bill Belichick didn't allow cursing in, in the music in the weight room, mm. how the guys would be sweeping up the weight room afterwards. Mm. Stuff that, I mean, Culture. you're a tenure guy, I'm not sweeping that up, you know what I mean? It's easy to have that mentality. Right, right. But in New England, it's just what you do. Right, it's right. what you do day in and day out, right. and it wins, and it works. Right. Obviously, it works. Yeah. Right? Now, have you give me like a moment where you saw a younger kid now doing something out of that character way, like you're like, yo, young fella, we don't do that around here because we're trying to win, right? Because I know you're the lead, you're leader in the locker room you're now. Bet. You know you're what I'm saying? You, right. Yeah. 
That's it's strange to hear it now. The six year guys, guys are the veterans. Yeah. They're veterans. That <laughs> Crazy. didn't happen yeah. for a long yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. didn't feel like it's I a young was a man's game. Till I was like at least my ninth, ninth, tenth year. Right? Yeah. yeah. And you know, I'll, I'll say for us is it's the complaining. And and okay. I feel like that's a trigger. When you complain or you or you moan and you know what else. Nick mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's a trigger and it happens more and more. Mm. Now sometimes I'll hear the younger guys do it. Why do we gotta do this? Why do we gotta do that? And I'm mm. like, I'm gonna stop it right there. Right. That's that negative energy right, that right. we don't need. Right. It might not seem like a big deal to you because it feels good to complain. Right. That's not what you need to do in a winning program. Because you can complain mm -hmm. about anything, but you gotta be able to push through that mental wall that is football. And if you can't do that as a team in the game when something right. bad happens, yeah. how's your body language? You start complaining. Are we looking at each other or is it on to the next play? Mm -hmm. So it, just, it really is the little stuff I feel like. And we have a young team and I feel like that's something we're gonna have to learn and go through. The quicker yeah. we can get through that, the quicker we can leave all that in behind and Absolutely. get to winning and get into playing for championships, mm -hmm. playing in the playoffs, being a contender year in and year out. Now, did you think you learned that at Bama or like in the high school or the military background that you have, you think? I would say I definitely learned it before Alabama. Okay. But going to Alabama, it helped me apply it mm -hmm. to football. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I knew, you know, I worked hard. I didn't complain. Right. But it's a different story when you get to Alabama. Right, right. Because I know like, you guys story. have probably, you know, one of the best defensive lines in the NFL, right? So all that, everybody on that D-line's from big time programs. So what do you see that, okay, we went and did that at Alabama, but you guys did it where you guys are from, but we don't accept it here? Um, I think not one thing in particular, and it kind of goes back to like buying in a little bit, mm -hmm. like putting the team first, like playing together, you know what I mean? Like. Trust, trusting that if I call a game, I'm not calling just to get myself open. Right. I'm calling to help you out. Right. You know what right. I mean? And I've only been on one team, so I can only speak for us, but I don't know if that's rare in the league. I don't know if, if guys, I mean, I would like to think that guys always, you know, try mm -hmm. to put the team first. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, everybody does, you, of you, course. You got to get yours. Right. But really just having that trust, you know what I mean? We only had one year together, and then last year, Chase got hers, Sweat right. got hers, so it kind of threw off the continuity, but right. just being able to go out there, I know exactly where Chase is going to be at. I know exactly mm -hmm. where Payne and Sweat are going to be at. Mm -hmm. And be able to play fast without having to over-communicate and just go out there and dominate. And we're getting there, but mm -hmm. it's going to take time. What do you think's missing? <clears throat> I, think, I think we need to put more time in together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think we have to play more together. Playing mm -hmm. a year with someone isn't it's enough, enough yeah. to really have that trust yeah. and continuity where Big time games on the situation, I don't even have to communicate to know where he's at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me and Matt have that, but I've also played with him for five years. Mm -hmm. Me and Payne have that because I've also played with him for eight years. Right. But me and Chase, we've only played for a year. Then last year he got hurt. Right. So we're still building that. And if right. all four of the defensive linemen aren't playing together, it's going to be tough. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So with young guys like Chase, obviously he got hurt. Um, as you were just alluding to that, you need that, those years to, 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 to build the chemistry and the rapport. For a guy like Chase, who's drafted number one, that's not expected for him to have all that time to to, to build to, to play with you. He needs to come in mm -hmm. and fit in play right well away, now, yeah. Right now, um, defensively, you spoke on that. What about offensively? I know that there's been some you know some rumors circling around about possibly you know Russell Wilson being traded or whatever the case may be. Offensively, what do you think that you guys need on that side of the ball to really put you know because defense. Like I said, if y'all are solid, that's going to put you guys in a good position. Mm -hmm. But offensively, that's what's going to put points on the board. I mean, I think similarly, it's been injuries, man. Like, okay. I've played in five years for, I think, close to 10 quarterbacks. Wow. That's, I mean, that is crazy. crazy. The year we had Alex Smith, we start off 6-2, and two, breaks his oh, leg. Yeah, yeah. Breaks his leg. Yeah. Next week, Colt McCoy comes in, breaks his leg. That's right, yeah. Next week, Mark Sanchez comes in. He's our quarterback for three games, and we bring Josh Johnson in. Like that's not a recipe Crazy. for winning. You start off six and two, especially in the NFL, seven right? and nine. Yeah, you know, so we right. play for so many different quarterbacks. Offensive line's been playing really well, but I think this year we had like at one point like twenty different combinations. Right. Yep. So yep. I mean, I'm not gonna test at all the injuries, but when you just yep. don't have the consistency because of injuries yep. or every year we're bringing a new guy, mm -hmm. it's tough. You know what I mean? Especially yeah, for tough. a young team, we're really young. Right. right I mean, right. I would say Terry McLaurin's probably one of our leaders on the offense. Absolutely. He's going in his third year, fourth year. Uh, uh, yeah, that's yep, a, third year. You know what I mean? Yep. So, so would you guys welcome, or what, what, what would you think uh, of, of the idea of bringing somebody on like a Russell Wilson, who obviously is proven, you know what I mean, uh, won Super Bowls? Um, is that something that you guys, as an organization, private, or ex really exploring? Uh, me? <laughs> He's like, I don't yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Look, yeah. look, 
quarterback driven league. We all understand it. Absolutely. Right? If you want to win championship games, yeah. if you want to get to the big dance, you got to be able to put up points. Mm. The way the game is, the defense can only do but so much. Right. Right. These quarterbacks are getting so good. It doesn't matter what a defense does. If the quarterback throws a perfect ball, don't matter. The, it doesn't matter what rush I have. It doesn't matter what the DB does. Double coverage. Three, I mean, you got you got guys like Jamar Chase and, yeah. and Justin Jefferson, six six two, six three, right, right. forty inch vert running four three. Yeah, what Nothing you gonna you can do, do with it? Right? It's a quarterback driven league, you know. Right. So That's hell great. yeah, we would love them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because it's like the the Washington Commanders, right? To the Dallas and Philly and the Giants, like you guys are not the best team to have a quarterback in that division in for that the long, division. you know, they're the only one. So okay. once you guys get that QB, you think you'll be the best in that division? I think so. Okay. I think with the defensive line we got, if you give us opportunities to pass rush a lot, I think we'll be able to eat up offensive lines. Yeah. You, Terry McLaurin, thousand yard receiver. Yeah, yeah. I think he's had seven different quarterbacks in his three years. Right, that's crazy. How do you, that's, that's tough. tough. Yeah, that's, tough. Yeah. That's, that's really <clears throat> tough. You know, you got to have continuity tough. with a quarterback. Yeah. You, yeah. He got to know when to throw the ball when you're breaking out the route without even looking at yeah. you. He, you don't throw, you don't throw to wide open guys in the NFL, you throw people open. Absolutely. So the timing is just so important. So right. to see what Terry has done with so many different quarterbacks. Right. So again, you're high school, right? Superstar, of course, going to the biggest, you know, one of the best universities, Alabama. Are you like that football, I love football type of guy? Or are you like, I'm talented and I like what I do? Or are you, how engaged were you at like sophomore, junior in high school? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. That's just what I did. Awesome. Didn't go out, didn't right. really do all the things. I just didn't care. I wanted to win. Yep, yep. Did you go to like, because I, like, I have this conversation with people, like, I didn't go to homecoming and prom, and I, I could care less. I just wanted to go play football. Like, were you like that in tune, or like, what else in high school? Like, what did you like not do in high school? I didn't party. I went to homecoming prom because I felt like, like you had to. Right, was, right. You know right. what I mean? You don't want to miss out on that. But I promise you, I, I could care less about all that. Right. He I just couldn't get no date, dog. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't get no date. Uh, I couldn't funny. either. <laughs> I couldn't either. Uh, but no, because people got to understand, like, especially the young kids we talk to, it's like, you have to sacrifice something. Because a lot of kids, I want to be great. I want to do this. And I want to go to Alabama. I want to play in the league. But you can't go do all of these things for fun and have fun and, and just do everything and then go practice for an hour. You hmm. know, it's like you got to sacrifice some of that stuff. To the kids who say they want to go to Alabama, I will ask them, are you sure? Mm. Are you? Are you you're giving are you, up your are life. You, are you really sure you want to do that? Right. You and, better make sure. Right. And why do you? And why do you say that? Because I've been down there. I took my nephew. This was like three, three years ago, three or four years ago. I took my nephew, two, both my, my nephews and my son. My son had never really seen football players like when he went to the camp. And I told him he was out here in California, up in the Bay Area, and he wanted to play football. And I'm like, dude. You don't know football until you go to the <laughs> South. They eat, drink, sleep football. <sighs> right. I took him to the camp. I got him to the camp. I know Denzel Duval, all Oh, of them. yeah. So got him in the camp. They went there the first couple of days. My son was cramping up after one little practice. <laughs> cramping up. You got three days because left. Because he's not used to it. And that's why, yeah. like, when you think about the Pac-10, all these other conferences, and you look at the SEC, out of what, the last 16, 15, 16 years, the SEC has won like nine of them. Mm-hmm. Y'all have won how many? Like what? Six, five, or six, six, six of them. I think like Saban's won six. Mm-hmm. Of them. You said they they need to be ready to go to Alabama. What is it about Alabama? It's your life. It's not mm-hmm. something you do. It's it's really who you are. And I don't like to say that because I don't feel like playing football is my life. Is is. I'm more than a football player. Mm-hmm. But when you go to Alabama, football is who you are. Mm-hmm. Right. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Look, there's very f- I've met some guys who were able to have lives outside of Alabama and you know party and do all that. Very few. I've very only seen few. like three people do it and actually have the success on the field. Wow. But when you go to Alabama, yeah. to this day, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. That's awesome. Physically, man. mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Mm-hmm. Dog, it, dog, it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I'm so fascinated by is just honestly just what Nick Saban has been able to do. And we talked to a gentleman earlier about guys buying in. And I'm sure that's what you're speaking of. You bought into the success of which in which, you know, Saban has basically put a blueprint down for you guys. You guys follow it. I've been in the weight room with Scott, with Co- Coach Cochran. Like that, that atmosphere alone had me. I just they asked me if I wanted to go if I wanted to work out with them. I'm like, yeah. no. Mm-hmm. So see it. everybody <laughs> just started trickling in. Yeah. 
dude, then they, the music was blasting. Mm -hmm. Then oh, everybody, boy. then he brought everybody up, you know, said his speech. Dude, it gave me chills mm -hmm. to the point I went and asked the equipment guy to give me some clothes. I went to go you, work you out. You be a part of this it. This is when mm -hmm. Najee, I think it might have been Najee Harris's like last year. That atmosphere, that culture, and at, at the same time, it's not only Nick teaching you guys how to be young men. He has basically put you guys in a situation where not only did you can succeed on a uh, scholastic, uh, uh, not on, just on the field, but scholastically, academically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's where he has put you know, things in place for you guys to honestly succeed on the field because there, there's nothing really else to do but to be a football player. Mm -hmm. You have no other reason but to, to succeed because you have everything there no at, your, at your disposal. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Saban, he doesn't, he does teach you how to be a successful football player. He teaches you how to be a successful person, mm -hmm. just in everything. Come on. No matter what you do, if you listen to Coach Saban, and I'm not saying he's not wrong because he's human, he makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. And when he makes mistakes, I've seen him apologize once. <laughs> you know? He said, well, when, he, when, when did Saban apologize? <laughs> he got on a player on the field. Okay. Bad. Oh, real bad. One, him. one of the ones that the whole practice stopped. Mm -hmm. Go back on film, he was actually wrong. Mm. I seen him stand up in front of the team and apologize. Only happened one time though. Wow. Only once. Awesome. What what player was it? Nudie, Nudie. the fullback. Really? Yeah. Boy, he got on him good too. Real <laughs> cool. Nudie. Like one of the ones that make you act right because you saw what he got. Ooh. Yeah. What? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's big. That's yeah. teaching those guys accountability. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. But does it bother you that again you get to the league and I think we talked. It was it was kind of it was Kobe. Right, he was just, he didn't understand his teammates because they didn't have that desire like him, right? Mm -hmm. And like I said, now you're going to a pro team, and like I said, you guys probably more disciplined and had more work ethic as a team, and now you're in the NFL getting paid. You see other guys not taking advantage of this situation. Does that bother you internally at all? Oh, 100%. You know, I was a guy with fire and brimstone. There was no mm. easing my, easing, there was no easy way to, for me to get on a guy. I was right. going at him like Coach Saban. And the mm -hmm. older I got, and you know, looking at you look at things like the last dance, you look at Kobe Bryant, it wasn't until you start to learn how guys learn, mm -hmm. how guys take criticism mm -hmm. from a player. Everybody's different. Yeah, that you like, all right, as a leader, I gotta figure out the best way to get to my guy. Different to, approach. Yeah, I just can't cuss you out. Now, even though that's the way I'm used to, and that's the way I would do it, right. Right. some guys just don't respond well to that. Right, right, especially right. from a player, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. So I think the first step for me was making sure I'm on my job. I can't get on you if I'm not doing what I got to do. Absolutely. At every moment, when you point one finger, three's coming back at you. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure you got to make sure your house is good to go. Absolutely. And then, and you know, I'm still learning this: how to get, how to have those tough conversations. Because yeah. I feel like that's something today that not a lot of guys know or want to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not make it public. Like, hey, Tio, let me let me come holler at you. We sit down man to man. Right. I tell you exactly what's going on mm -hmm. and actually take it in a way that's respectful and know that there's no hard feelings. At the end right. of the day, if you can't help us win on the field, right, then, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Right. Right. And that's what it's about. You that's know what exactly I mean? what it's about. That's all it's about. Because, yeah. again, it's, Bama is all about winning, right? So the, the Miami Dolphins coach had came out with, you know, the – the owner wanted them to throw some games. So you know that those types of owners are out there. Does that make you look at your owner a little bit different or maybe look at the NFL a little bit different because maybe not everybody in the NFL wants to win. Does that bother you at times? Because that's how I feel about some owners. I'm like, everybody don't want to win. They want to be right. They want to pick the right guys and they want to, you know, say, yeah, we have the best, you know, jerseys or whatever. There's a bunch of other reasons they want to be owners, but they don't all want to win. Right, because you got to think about everything that you've, you've spoken to us about in the last, what, 20, 30 minutes. You've worked hard. You've put right. your, you've sacrificed. You know what I mean? You're, you're trying to help young kids, you know, the younger guys buy in. You're trying to do the right things to win ball games. But then you have an owner, unbeknownst to you, having conversations with the coach about throwing games. Yeah. That's, how does that make you feel? Like, I mean, I mean, I, I can't imagine, like I said, being on that team and then hearing this. Right. Because you've worked so hard during the offseason. This is right. what you, this what is I your do. livelihood. This is what you do. And then to hear that, what do, what, what do you think? What, how does that make you feel? The first thing I thought was, who cares? You know, you got to look at it from perspective. From an owner who knows, I'm going to be here regardless. Mm -hmm. He can look at it like, yeah, let's throw some games and get a better draft pick. It's like playing Madden franchise. Now, I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> to a level. You're, yeah. you're trying to get the best draft picks. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and it's funny when you hear fans say, we should tank for this player. Well, who's going to give up their job for that? Mm. 
Mm. You finna go out there and look bad on film? Come on. Because right. you won't be here even though you might get that pick. Mm. So the owners, I'm sure there's conversations like that because they're thinking five, ten years from now. We can't think that way because every day we're getting interviewed. Mm. So when they're thinking like that, that's fine and dandy. But I know as a coach, you got to go out there and win some football games. Mm, come on. You better look good because if you look bad there, what's, another team's not going to want to hire you. Yep. If I look bad at the commanders, why would any other team want to give me an opportunity? So the owners are going to think what they're going to think, but every day is an interview, and as soon as you think you're safe and you're comfortable, hmm, mm. that's when it's over for you. Mm, right? You ain't lying. Well, sure, you're well-spoken, right, going into your sixth year, like you feel like you're matured, right? So what else besides football do you have going on in life? Like what do you want to do after? Have you started that process of thinking after football 10, 15 years away as well? The biggest thing I want to do after football is I just want to build an empire for my family, oh, not sorry. just have success for me, have success for my wife's family, my family. Mm -hmm. And what that looks like, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, really, I really don't know, but yeah. I want to be a staple in the D.C. community in multiple facets and um, you know, see where we go from there. I feel like it's tough to really plan perfectly what you're going to do after football. Mm -hmm. Most players, at least for me, I'm done with football after I get out of football. Mm. But, I, I mean, you guys probably know you miss that locker room. Yeah, the you camaraderie. Miss that, you miss that camaraderie. Yeah. You miss yeah. that energy. So I don't know what's next for me. I just know I want to be able to set my, leave my legacy on and off the field and build an empire for the Allen family. There it is. How far is Washington away from the Super Bowl? Honestly, I think we get, we get the right quarterback. Mm -hmm. I don't see why we can't compete. There it is. I really believe that. Yeah. At, least I mean, for that at least for that, that NFC East. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking bigger than yeah. that. I mean, worse the first is like the whole, Cincinnati's doing it this year. Mm -hmm. It's all, it happens a lot now, right? right, right. It, it, the, Two years ago, they were drafting in front of us. There you go. Now they're playing in the Super Bowl. There you go. It doesn't take long. You get the right quarterback, you, you know, stay healthy, you build yeah. it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Things can turn around quick, okay. but you got to do it the right way. Yeah, there it is. There it is. All right, well, yeah. Let everybody know where they can find you, like Instagram, Twitter, all that oh, stuff. Oh man, you know? easy handles. John Allen ninety three, Twitter and Instagram. Don't do Snapchat. Don't do none of that. But yeah, there it is. Easy. Okay. Jonathan Allen, Washington Redskins. Right. Get your popcorn ready. Washington Commanders. Did I say Redskins? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Allen, Washington <laughs> Commanders. Yeah. I got you, dog. My I, man, I, I, get I, your I, popcorn I, ready. Appreciate yeah. you, fam. Appreciate you, guys.